Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mount Schmodown, where we do a career retrospective on your favorite or even sometimes underlooked or overlooked players in the in the Schmo in the movie trivia Schmodown. Uh, welcome, you guys. I hope you are having a fantastic Saturday, or at least your Saturday is just getting off to a good start with us here. I'm your host for today, Brian Payne, and to my right is my other co-host, Ben Rayner. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm looking forward to this one. I'm as well. And I know some of you have watched us in the past. It's not just the two of us here. Our other co-host, Brandon, he unfortunately was just unable. He couldn't be able to attend with us today. But we and we really wanted him to be up with us on this episode, especially the person that we are talking about. Before we get to the person we're talking about, let's not ignore our special guest who we brought on today, everybody. Our special guest, if you are... If you follow the Schmodown community, you would have seen his name popped up in a uh, little uh, donation Schmobots from SEN. And if you follow uh, any of your favorite uh, Schmodown competitors, you'll most likely see his name pop up in chats. But he is here with us in person, and that is Fifty Shades of Geek. Fifty, we are glad that you are here with us. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for addressing the camel in the room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, we're so glad we did. Otherwise, if you we just ask him, who is this guy? I mean, uh, he's not Brandon, but don't worry. Uh, but but like I said, he is a Schmodown fan, obviously, with the Schmodown community follows. And let's just get to the point. If you've clicked on this video and if you've seen our thumbnail, we are talking about the sweaty man, the sweatiest of the sweaties, King Sweaty, Big John Schnepp for today, everybody. And yeah, I'm, I'm accentuating his name because I don't want it to make it sound like I'm saying John Snap. No, Schnepp. Otherwise, if you if you were in front of him mispronouncing his name, he'd give you this weird look, and then he'd brain you in. <laughs> I'm not saying I know nothing about him personally. It's just more of what I've seen from him at Comic Con conventions. But let's go into it. John Schnepp, him in the Schmodown. I mean, he started off. We, I got introduced to him as a ho when he was hosting as like as a co-host for AMC Movie News, and then with Heroes, you know, doing Nightmares, and then all that switched to Collider. A lot of film knowledge. I'm not gonna not that's an understatement. This man knew movies. This man loved talking about movies. He was very passionate about movies. He was one of the great. He like you said, he he was a real okay, he was a cinephile. He, like, he loved old movies. He loved he loved the um, geeky genres. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a I think oh, you take that as a compliment, honestly. I think yeah. John would take that as a compliment about not just geeky movies, but I mean, and of course, when we think geek, we, I mean, we immediately go to superheroes, comic book movies, which he's a fan of, but then also other films that's out there that would be in the geeky realm, kind of like certain sci fi films. I mean, that you would Horror think about that. stuff. Yeah. Fantasy yes. stuff. Sci fi, space stuff. He loves all of that. You know, the funny thing is, when he first. Uh, I got, I got introduced to him through the movie talk days back on AMC. And the first time I, I heard he was on it, I'm mean, like, when he was introduced, he was always being introduced by uh, Ashley Mova as, and next yeah. up, writer, director, John Schnipp. And I was like, this yes. guy looks a little too serious to be on a panel with these goofy knuckleheads. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the, the, the most childish and most uh, energetic person out of all of them. And, uh, Gone way too soon, I'm afraid. Uh, sorry to bring to bring down the room. No, honestly, it was something that was going to be unavoidable to uh, mention. I mean, yeah, which John. Oh, yeah, thank you, Brian. <laughs> yeah, that's one. That was a topic that could not be avoided. John Snap, uh, he was definitely taken from us too soon. Um, uh, I can't, oh my god, already the date is slipping through my. I've already forgotten the date when the year when we left us, but I do know that the year when he when he, when he passed away. I was, uh, let's just get into it. When John, when we lost John Snap, unfortunately, due to health reasons, the funny, it was just so weird when the news was announced at, during the time of San Diego Comic-Con, which I was attending at the time as volunteering, working, you know, dedicating my hours. I was just uh, leaving one of my little volunteer work staff, work staff shifts. And then all of a sudden I get, I see all of a sudden on Facebook pop up, John Snap, RIP. I'm like, wait, what? That dropped my jaw dropped, honestly. I, I was 
We all did. I was having people. I was having people in their cosplay walk by me while I was staring at my phone, shocked from the news. Honestly, this was 2018, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, the year had just the year hit my mind. Yeah, it was the year. It was. I mean, it was the year Infinity War came out because I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was- I was gonna say, I mean, it's we're gonna keep repeating this. It was unfortunate. It was a, a huge blow, especially uh, with the, the 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 personalities we know of the Shmoda, like people in charge, like Christian, uh, Mark Ellis. I mean, even those he worked with alongside, like Riley Clark Wolf, uh, even those who knew him in the Schmodown, Robert Byer Burnett, like so many uh, so many people who personally knew John Stem and could tell you stories about him were hurt by that loss, and especially us, which the Schmodown, which was still. Like, really starting to turn up there. Like, we were just getting into the Magic season. We were, like, right within Season 5, nearly about to turn a corner into the Magic season when we had lost him. And even then now, just looking at Schmo, let's just get talking about John Schnepp's career in the Schmo now. Even though it was a very he, – he only had a short number of matches, but even then, that guy had – his passion for movie knowledge is – you really felt that this man could dominate in movie trivia. Yeah. Also, uh, July ninth. I just uh, July nineteenth. To- yeah. yeah. No, that's okay. I mean, yeah. If, if you guys feel free to talk, go right ahead. I don't want it to be as if I'm just going to be dominating this conversation. No, it is. Like he said, he had the knowledge. I mean, if he if he really knows more now, now, and if he knew his study. I think he would be a force to be reckoning with. I think if he did fight Judith quite a little bit, I think he would be up there with some of the best. And I think he would be fun to watch as well. I think John suffered from what a lot of uh, current Shmodan players suffer from, which is he has the knowledge he just didn't understand the game well enough. We definitely see that happen a lot with like the Whitney Steibolds and the Mad Atchities of the world, especially in uh, the last few seasons. But the, the thing about John Schnepp is w- walking into it, he's go- he was going up against Finstock. Remember, <laughs> this was 2015 yeah. Finstock. His first you single knew- breath, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You knew John was going to whoop his ass. And that didn't happen, obviously. And when you suddenly start to see Finstock, Going past him in the scoreboards, I was like, "Wait, what is happening? This this should not be happening." And there's a lot of misunderstanding the questions. I think misunderstanding. Obviously, let's not uh, overlook the fact that it was the old format, especially mm-hmm. round one, where I, I guess, it, and you can definitely tell that John was more. It was, it was pretty much like in the round three, in the in the season three format. It was especially it was carried off from the Ultimate Showdown where. You get you 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 choose two different categories, you know, category one or two, and then you get yeah, first person goes first gets three questions in the fir- and then it tr- it switches back and forth. That yeah, that's how those six questions were. Uh, but yeah, with John, uh, even then, John Snap. I mean, the fact that you said fifty every time he was introduced on Collider, it was always writer and director John Snap. That enough should have told you this man knows movies and he's going to pretty much yeah dominate and whip your ass in that trivia. So. We obviously thought this would have been an easy win, but at the same time, oh wait, Finstock was his second match. His first match was against uh, Kale Anonymous, though, and even then, that was a bit of a match where he was kind of showing some rust there. Wasn't uh, Kale, Kale Anonymous his second match for Schnapp? No. Oh yeah, his second. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes here, but I'm going off of my notes which match I wrote down first. But yeah, looking at the timeline, Finstock was his first match. My see, yeah. you're already catching me up on that shit. You're already catching me up on my BS. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone know what happened to that guy, Kalen Anonymous? Yeah. Never even I mean, seen him. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's a. Uh, he got other jobs out there. I mean, the last I saw of him, I mean, at least on a. I know he has a channel or this guy. It's been a while. I just know the last time I saw him personally within the circles I follow, he was on a Video Drew's uh, YouTube channel. But um, I'm. But he, I know he has gotten work. It, it wasn't like he just went off the face of the planet. <laughs> well, it would have fit the name. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> anonymous. Yeah, like it'd be catching on to you, but uh, I get what you're saying though. But uh, just looking, but yeah, but let's get back to his match against Finstock. That match was kind of um, 
It was, it, it, I mean, on rewatch, it was really tough to go along. You see, the chef, he knew the answers. The problem was that he just could, the questions that he was given threw him off a little bit, especially if we talk about his uh, question in, in animated movies. Uh, Jesus. Name oh all God. seven of the, name all seven of the dwarves from Snow White. You're like, hey. sleepy, drowsy, scowly, skimpy, <laughs> scribbles. Fuck you and Easter egg. You got that quote for quote. I was actually gonna pull up a clip on that, but that was very. I good. watched it. I watched it more times than I probably showed up. <laughs> no, no, man. I mean, the more times you probably watch a snap match, it's probably the same amount of times I dedicate watching uh, uh, Clark Wolf or Rachel Cushing's match, or even this season watching over and over again a fucking Roka match now because you want to see their slips, <laughs> or you just want to enjoy them in the moments, but. Yeah, uh, the, the questions like that earlier on, looking at the when it was just mainly just trivia knowledge, that stuff could really throw you off. I mean, I will and admit, oh, go ahead. It was a very first example of a really good five point question, which didn't really happen a lot back then. Nowadays, it's just we know the five point question is going to be the toughest question you're ever going to get, but back then, it wasn't quite perceived that way. So name all seven dwarves for the five point question. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, especially then the, 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 tr the format was still new to them at the time. Like they were finally going professional with it. It was just them in their own little slice uh, within the studio during Schmo's nose. And then it goes to Collider where Collider is backing them. And it's like, yeah, they got this big studio and this big production. So I don't doubt that they came in with just the knowledge alone. I know you want to say something, Ben, go right ahead. Yeah, I really think I'm going to say I, the way I think of season three is like, I don't want to say it's a rebuilding season. It's more of a transition season from what we had in one and two to what we have now. Yeah. It, it was, it was uh, like a cocoon. Yeah, yeah a cocoon. Oh, it was a cocoon. A cocoon. A cocoon. Yeah. Right. Cocoon. Cocoon. Okay. Well, it was more of at the time that was like you would compare the Ultimate Showdown season one and two to actual like bar trivia. You just go in there, have fun, maybe miss or get a couple of questions, and then you're done for the night. This is when it really season three was like, yeah, they're they're the start of everything moving forward, and we've gone this over and over again with Ben. I mean, with Brandon as well. Like season three and four, they're completely different eras especially now with the formats we're used to. But let's not say that John, that Shep couldn't adapt to that stuff because even then in season four, he got his opportunity to play in this, in the whiteboard rounds, uh, doing his team match with heroes against Trek and in the uh, horror exhibition match, the celebrity horror exhibition match with him, uh, Diego from Ash versus the evil dead against Whitney and Diane versus Ash when he was there with Bruce Campbell on as announcer. So to say that Shep couldn't adapt to any of that stuff, I mean, obviously it was a long shot to say because he didn't get to play a lot. Because that was like very early in season five when that match dropped. He was very busy at the time. Yep. No, I don't blame you. I mean, uh, one thing about Shep, I mean, the best, I mean, yeah, he's a director. He's directed a lot of, he's directed a, lot, a, a good lot of projects. Most notably his documentary, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened. I'm pretty sure he was, he was, he, most of that time in between four and five, he was trying to, you know, really push, you know, get that out there, probably going to different festivals, you know, put getting the film out there noticed. I mean, I got I remember watching it. I really enjoyed uh the interviews he's able to get. Uh so many people getting the chance to just talk about the fact that this movie looked like it was gonna be very artsy, like out there for a Superman film, but it just couldn't come past. <laughs> well, um and then we really want to see Nick Cage and Superman. Oh hell yeah. I definitely would have enjoyed it, especially if this was 90s Nick Cage at the time to where he wasn't too far out. He was still within like, he was still like at the time a very serious actor, but being very experimental with his roles. So him as Superman would have been interesting. And I still remember that single shot you see of Superman testing out a Superman costume, him with long hair. That would have been very interesting to see on the big screen. And, and depending on when that movie would have been released, now, remember the 90s, before you got the over-the-top Nick Cage like you did in certain movies like Face Off, he still gave out very good sub performances like you see in Con Air and Leaving Las Vegas. And I don't know. It would have been fun to see where this movie would have fell in Nick Cage's filmography, especially okay. if it was by Burton. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, have a, I have a question for you guys. Looking, at this, looking at this right now, 
and Snip is there with us. Yes. What, what faction would he be in if he's not playing and if he's running? I think Schnepp would have been a big draw for certain factions uh, if he yeah. was still with us today. We talking this season or the last season? Because last season, I don't think there's any chance that Burnett doesn't pick him up in the draft. Okay, hold on. Uh, before you, I love that little thing that Brian posted down. That match gets Kale. Gene Hackman was. The, I love that. Yeah, that was a fun part going on. Uh, that was uh, one of Gene, uh, John's uh, questions in uh, in his like in the early round one. And of course, he guessed. I think it was an anime question. It was trying to guess uh, voice, and of course, he just said Gene Hackman was wrong. And then Kale, every single time he didn't know anything, he just shouted out Gene Hackman, and it just kept getting a laugh <laughs> from the crowd the entire time. I loved it. <laughs> and then his final was, question. It was, oh, it was like the Jane Fonda before it was Jane Fonda. Yes. Yeah. It's Fonda for every answer. Oh, yeah. That oh, was like, oh, it was like that. Cameron Diaz. That bitch. Yes. Actually, it was really kind of funny. John, look, not, even though John Stepp didn't have like a big Cameron Diaz, but in his matches, he. He, he he really wasn't a fan of Julia Roberts. If you saw the look on his faces, the questions that that would have changed the lead, that would have gotten it, kept him in the game, uh, like from rom coms. Most of it, like he got a Julia Roberts question. I remember in a rom coms, and the look on his face was just utter just disappointment. Like he just did not like that. Like if 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 Shep had continued to play in more singles matches, I'm pretty sure Julia Roberts would have been his Cameron Diaz. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, back to your question, Ben, on like if Schne- if Schnepp was still with us today, and he was get and he was on the draft list for season eight, uh, I would honestly say he would work great with Koi because mm-hmm. you know Koi is not agree. just because Koi also did work with Collider Heroes. I'm pretty sure two two men who love talking about geeky stuff would have gelled off great together. And he, like him, oh, go ahead, Pity. He basically took over his part in comic book shopping. Right. That's right, he did. Yeah. So it would have been great to see those two, like the protege, like the guy who carried the torch from him from uh, Heroes and Comic Book Shopping, working with the uh, sensei, who, the, the old master, the Jedi master, let's say, from that from that time when he had, when he was hosting. That would have been that would have been a nice pairing. Also, he a question. I wonder, would Snap be the manager of the moon? It would definitely be team captain, I think. Yeah, because I, I, I think, go ahead, fifty. Keep going. Go ahead. I, I think he said himself. He's got the knowledge. He doesn't like trivia very mm-hmm. much, and then and that I think he said it was the reason why he couldn't pull it in singles a lot. But it worked half and half in teams. And plus, I'm just gonna put it out there. Could you imagine the quirky Mercs as a faction with John Schnepp? And Kevin Smith on a team together? Oh my God, that would have been like I won't say the ultimate dream team, but that would have been the dream pairing that you would love to have seen. Mm. And even uh, Kevin Smith had even uh, when when uh, Christian had Kevin Sh- Smith on uh, SCM when he did an interview with them, they even had their best moments talking about. They, they even shared their mo- their memories of John Schnepp as well. Yeah, 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 yes, That's exactly. The Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, 50. I'm sorry. That's one of the reasons he won against um, Wolves of Steel, which we all thought was going to be the team to dominate uh, the league at that time. They lost to Team Heroes because of the superhero stuff, and they almost got knocked out by uh, Real Rejects. Well, I'm going to say that with Wolves of Steel, though. Uh, that match, and uh, we, uh, I know Ben and I, we definitely talked about that with Jay Scotty, their match like, with the World Real Rejects. Wolves of Steel, their first match against Heroes, it was still a confident battle because they came in – Four points to two after that first round. They get eight points in 90s movies. No, and Heroes only gets a one point steal from them. And they only get, and then when they got comic book movies, Heroes only got seven points total out of six questions. So it was still a very close game. The only reason why they won was because Steel got a five pointer in Westerns, which the question was name two of the three Sergio, uh, two of the three films Clint Eastwood was directed by Sergio Leone in the Man with No Name trilogy. Riley couldn't pull out the other two. He had a, a fistful of dollars, and he just couldn't remember the other two. That's why they won. Because honestly, it was Wolves of Steel's match to lose. Because 
Heroes had missed their three-pointer in 80s, and they got their five-pointer in Oscar winners. But to say that if Riley had gotten both any of the three uh, Man With No Name movies correctly, that would have been their match. But even then, that Heroes match is still fun to watch because that was John Schnepp just shooting jabs and shooting and shooting uh, shots at Clark and uh and Riley like nobody's business. Like he just every time an answer having our question asked, John Snep had a Schnepp had a quickie quip, a, a, a real quick quip coming following that. And, well, and he would have been like, here's my theory. If he may still with us today, and if he may have a team, I don't see him on Kevin Smith's team. Only because I think Sean, only because I think both of them are like the mouth of their team. Sean Schnapp would need a player, a aim player to team up with. So maybe he would be... Like if Smith had decided to continue playing teams, I I don't know if Kevin Smith would have been the partner for him, honestly. Because hmm. it would have fallen under scheduling. But how, how about this team? How about this team? On the books, Moen Kanampik and Sean Schnapp. If there was, if, if if there was a geek, if there was a team division in geek, I'd say yes. Uh, but you're yeah. gonna say something. Go ahead. I just, I, I don't, I, I'm having a hard time picturing Mara in either singles or teams. Like, I, obviously, I don't know her, but I, I don't think she, she would want to compete in anything other than. No, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I know she has general movie knowledge like all of us, but Mara has shown her her <laughs> heart is in IG. Yeah. Mara has shown her heart is in IG, and then after the announcement that uh, Kaiser made, she's going to be playing in Star Wars 2. <laughs> so it's clear she's going to – her eyes and focus and her determination is within the geek division, the geek arena. <laughs> but even – and even then, even though even though it was announced that that IG slices or the I or the inner defense category itself is going to feature in singles and teams matches, it's still not enough. I mean, it would have been enough for Schnepp to continue playing in teams, but before you continue, fifty, um, we we didn't get to hear from you. What faction would you have thought Schnepp would have worked well with? Oh, I, I was going to say, but then you said it. The, the Mercs. Oh, I any think of, he, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I thought that you had like a second uh, faction. Oh, like, no, 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 no. The Mercs, I think, fit his personality the best. Because, first of all, the theme of the Mercs were, we're just trying to have fun and maybe answer some trivia and maybe we'll win. That's like Koi's philosophy. And it works for them. And just look at the people he's got on the faction, like the Real Reject, Kevin Smith, comes in, answers some questions. So far, he's been lucky. Like Bibiani and the kid, definitely former champions, but they just come in to have fun. And that's, that's why I think... Schnepp would work well on that faction in particular. Oh, um, Ben, can you pull that up from Leo? And that kind of represent that question itself. That was kind of a good example of what you said earlier with Fifty Shades about the difficulty questions we saw earlier in season three. Robert's one pointer in sci-fi in a in a oh my god, what was it? Wait, it was a match against the Patriots. It was sci-fi, yeah. And the question was, name an act, name two actors who were killed by alien, an alien predator and Terminator in those three franchises. And yeah, he got carried away. I, it, not carried away. He got uh, caught up because obviously the first actor I think of is Bill Paxton because he's been in the Terminator, Aliens, and a, and a Predator, and Predator 2. So mm. I immediately thought that. So the second actor was difficult. He was, and Robert Mar Burnett was thinking of Lance Henriksen because he's also been in those three franchises but then technically his character in aliens was a android so that i can understand what he's talking about and this was before no this was after avp so that would have counted no he didn't get killed by an alien no 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 when he had him michael bean i can't remember if michael bean was in a predator movie Hmm. Uh, see that's the that see that's uh, that was one of the interesting facts like who are the other two actors i know bill paxton immediately but I can't think of any other actor that was in – like, you can find an actor that was maybe in two of the films, but then who was in the third one? Because I know Carl Weathers was definitely not an alien or Terminator, so he's immediately out of the picture. <laughs> like, you got to look at supporting cast, which is a which is an issue. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, though, but isn't that one of the questions or one of the matches that directly influenced the creation of the challenge rule? 
Because I don't think it was, I don't think the JTE rule was even at a no JTE it. did not come until like somewhere within the middle of season four or no I think at, no this came like at the start of season four I'm sorry JTE was the JTE rule came in at the start of season four but the challenge itself I think it may have helped like I think it was one of the I think this match that challenge that Robert Burnett wanted to bring could have been one of the like like seeds to plant for the challenge mm-hmm. rule yeah. because even then challenges. Were not as frequent, or when people wanted to challenge a question, it wasn't like, "Oh, you're challenging it." It's just more of like, "Oh, I have an issue with this question. I want to bring up about it." I think no season four. I think challenges started coming in. Uh, yeah, you got, I think so. it's like going over these matches, like because they're so far apart from each other. When we pick a player, it's hard to discover like when was the origin or the basis of this. But that is an interesting fact to bring up because season three, there really wasn't a buttload of uh, challenges thrown at you. It was just kind of like, "Okay, oh, we're here to play." Because even then, the the format itself was still off. Because in that match against Kale, it kind of went like Kale had to answer his three questions before Schnepp could even answer one. Even though technically, it should have gone like uh, like it didn't. It, most of the matches earlier on didn't go back and forth. You know, like let's say they got a one pointer and then a three pointer and it turned around. I know Christian and Mark would still keep with them, and then they go to the next guy. Because I thought that was like that in uh, Clark's match against Finstock even though Finstock heavily lost. But not about that. We're mainly – but that little thing that Leo brought up was still something interesting because that was still at the time where they were still trying to work out their uh, format. Like, it was still brand new. Like you said, uh, 50, it it was a cocoon at the time. It wasn't just perfect just yet. Yeah. But – No, you go ahead. I'm talking uh, too much. That's the reason why they implemented the challenge rule in the first place. Because the format and the show was getting as competitive as it was at the time. And like you said, not, not a lot of people challenged it, but as they progressed, the questions themselves became a little bit more challengeable. And yes. uh, I, I guess that's one way of putting it. So they became a little bit too more complicated and th- they needed some more clarification. That's why they implemented the challenge rule in the first place. No, it works. Uh- Ben, it was a funny thing. We didn't get to hear from you. What faction you think Schnepp would have worked with? If you agree with us, the quirky marks is great, but was there another faction you had in mind? Agree with I us. I mean, uh, my friend had to win the mix, but he's finishing up. I think he's bad. I can see him winning really, really well with Winston. Yeah, yeah that's, mean, a, that's another yeah. faction that mostly goes in there just to have fun and enjoy the game. Maybe he can be on Team Captain. Yeah. I'm going to see him working really well with Winston, too. Yeah. Yeah. Although, I mean, that one, although, I don't know how well it would work. Personally, I would love to see him on Corruption somehow. I know, I know, I know, think that would. Christian did say he wanted to go heal. He wanted to go heal. Yeah, Shep did. He, Shep had he, he, Christian and Shep had a plan for him to be a heel. I think him, if he was still with us today, and and if uh, Shep was still, and if Shep and Shep had become a heel at that time, I think he would have worked with corruption because I don't think he would have worked with Finstock Exchange because even then, because yeah. during Shep's little career, his main little his main little gripe, his mini rivalry was against Finstock because that traced all the way back. From season two, because Schnepp, at during the Ultimate Schmodown team tournament, he and Dena Zen were a team, were team collider, mm-hmm. and they lost to Box Office Breakdown. And if they had beaten Box Office Breakdown, they would have gone against top ten. Like that's one of the fun things I like looking at these players' career perspectives. These little what if moments. Like I just mentioned one. What if that? Uh, well, actually, yeah, because if top ten, because if let's say if for, ex- I'm sorry, I'm. I'm I'm spinning off here, but I want to get down to the middling point where I was going to say with John Stepp's career. I saw in looking at his matches, there were two opportunities to where we could have had different outcomes, which was if he, if the he, if heroes had beaten the Patriots, we would have seen them go against top 10 for the championship at the first spectacular. That would have wow. been a fun match to see. And then the second one I would have thought of, we would have also seen Schnepp go up against top 10 again in the, in the ultimate Schmodown finals to determine who was going to face Schmoes, I mean, who was going to face Schmoes for the championship. Like, two times, okay. Shep has gone against JTE 
and either out and if and, and things had gone differently, JTE would have not have had taste of singles of teams gold. <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 no, uh, fights once. That's right. Oh, I've tried to cope through all those movie fights to pull up stuff, but man, it was like going through a huge needle, trying to find a specific needle in a needle haystack. <laughs> yeah. I, I, do, I definitely remember something he said. Where I think he was arguing something bad about the Phantom Menace and stuff. Oh, he was asked which, mo which, two, which two characters you would team up or something. And he was like, Salacious Scrum and Jar Jar Binks <laughs> murdering all of this, the racist stereotypes from the Phantom Menace. And he was like, oh, the Trade Federation, Bagaba Gaba, making Bagaba Gaba. I kind of looked that match up. It was yeah. definitely a man of many words. Okay, now we're going to Yeah, I wonder, uh, Venus, what if Schnepp with you for. I want to play that out for a second. That's real, real with me here. If he's with you, if he's in you, not saying working corruption, mm -hmm. do you see him working well with like a mic, maybe on a team? Kalinowski, yeah. I could definitely see him working well, gelling well with Mike. I mean, these two men, the, not, first thing, um, like you before, he's a huge fan of geek movies. Mike, obviously, playing in the IG division, those two would have done well together, just having endless discussions and maybe debates on just geek movies, you know. And even then, what helps you best, other than studying movie knowledge, it's always good to have a good conversation with somebody about certain movies because then you remember a certain uh, element or a certain actor from a film that makes it stick into your brain much more. And that's one thing I loved about watching uh, Schnepp. When he was hosting, he'd be talking to a certain, uh, he'd just be talking about maybe a certain little element or a certain little Easter egg or a key fact from either a Marvel or a DC movie. And all of a sudden, huh, I didn't think of it like that. Or like, oh, I know that. So I think he and Mike would have worked very well together. I think he also would have been like a good, uh, almost like a good captain or mentor with chance. And depending oh. on that, any deep players that would have came in. Okay, they talking about this now. If Schnipp had continued, how well would you guys have think would he have gone in playing geek movie in, in IG? How well would he have been in IG? Oh uh, I think that I think that was mentioned in a, in, a, in a backstage interview. Like uh hmm. Dewberry did say that he wanted to challenge Schnepp, I think, after one of his team's matches. I think before yeah, he, I think that was at a time when uh they asked him at the end of the uh, interview, is there anyone who would like to challenge? He was like, I'd like to challenge that guy. And a couple of weeks later, that happened. It wasn't at today like it was more structured. Well, yeah. Well, even then during season four, people were still making call-outs and certain matches could have happened, but things fell apart. Like, Dewberry and Schnipp was obviously, as Leo brought up, that was definitely a one point as well. There's also been a few other changes of matches, uh, potential matchups that could have happened. And he, But uh, as I said before, if John Schnepp had played in the IG division – would he have dominated? Like, would you have seen this man be become inner geekdom champion? Because I personally the, could have. The only way I can see that happening is he had the knowledge. You need to know how to tap into it. Maybe if he studied more, if he had more time to study, and then find I work with somebody to help him tap into that knowledge. Yeah, I can see him. I can see him being on the same level. I mean, in those things, I can see him being on the same level as like Kevin Smith, probably. I agree with you, Ben, because the IG cat, the IG division has a lot of movies that sneak up on you that you're not expecting, like Tank Girl. Or yeah. the surrogates, or the losers, yeah. like all these movies that you th you you think of inner geek. And he was like, oh, it's like the, the Marvel, the DCs, the Harry Potter's, the Star Trek, Star Wars, the uh, Lord of the Rings. I can hang, and it's not. It's it's got all these movies that you completely forgot were IG questions. And I'm pretty sure Schnepp has already seen most of them multiple that's times. That's so that's why. I I think you do. But I agree with Ben because. He clearly had the knowledge of all these obscure movies that no one even thought about. I just don't know if he would, 
able to go into the specifics, which is what the questions of the Shmodan ask. So definitely not in season four, five, or six, but maybe season seven or eight, when there's more factions stuff and managers and the way it's structured now, I think you could definitely pull out uh, the IG championship in, if he was still with us. I, I'm kind of the opposite. I do agree if he was still with us. I think he would have been great in IG, but I think he would have done well in the earlier time of season four, five, and six, because that time they were mainly just focusing on those core eight films. And John Snap, he could have also have lent his voice to help shape the IG division, to help bring in, to help really bring in discussions of certain IG film, of certain films that you would kind of categorize maybe as IG. I mean, not just like films like Tank Girl, but also bring in more questions about The Shadow, The Phantom, get some more Spawn questions in there. Heck, even look at film, even superhero films, not just related to simply comic book, but superhero in general, because- Hancock. Yeah, Hancock, uh, even the anime ones like Underdog. I mean, that little film. Like, John, I think he would have ch- I, I don't think he would, not, not someone who would have actually enjoyed watching them, but I think he could have been someone to help champion films like these to be in, to get more, to get asked more into inner geekdom. Oh, no. Good point. Uh, okay. I'm talking about, I have two, I have two matches in my head that I would have loved to see here. Okay, go but, for it, man. Let me, let me, let me. Get this out. I would have loved to see Snap fit Seth Snyder. Yeah, two completely opposite players. Oh, in a one on one match, yeah, because we, t- we, yeah. t- we sort of got that with Heroes and Pages, but I see where you're going. Yeah, yeah they're in a one on one match. Sadly, I think Snyder takes it. Because I, I, yeah. I it's going to come, come down to the categories and the questions, but. I think Snyder is de- definitely at that time showed that he had the m- more of the knowledge and more of the passion of the game. And also, yeah, and also, I mean, Snyder at, he did help do reviews, so the film knowledge, did, the, the the certain facts or certain things, uh, w- laid more into his brain a lot, eat a lot more as a reviewer. And actually, that here's one thing I do want to counteract with the whole thing. I think Schnepp still would have done great, even if he only studied a little. Because there, we still see players in the showdown that are able to play very good by not studying, by mainly just watching films like Ethan Irwin, like Jeff Snyder, like Ken Draco, even Stacey Mark Howard. Stacey Howard as well. I'm not saying if they don't study, they're going to be bad. And I'm not trying to discredit what you said, Ben. But uh, to me, it's like even if they, even if you do study, it only counters a fraction because you're mainly just looking at facts and maybe taking notes. I think – what helps a lot with tri- playing trivia is just knowing, not just knowing it, but also remember watching a certain film because it's yeah. really sparking up your brain. And like I said, I'm not trying to discredit you, Ben. You do make out some yeah. great points that if Shep, if he was still with us, I I do think sometime around season seven, he could have, or season six, he could have transitioned more into the study and kind of like how Mike did during season six, and especially like how uh, Ben Bateman was in his season. He also transitioned more into the heavy studying. I about yeah. The, yeah, yeah, that that match, Blofeld's cat, that was part of the ultimate Schmodown teams match in season four. This was after RB joined the Lions Den. Yeah, and there's this great little cutscene where Schnapp kicks him out, and sa- and then of course RB he's shouting at them, "Who do you go? Who gonna have joined hit heroes? Inman?" And he goes, "Nope." And then when he says Navarro, he just has this great turn to the camera and just says, "Yes." And it leads to R and B just having this great tirade in pre- in pre interview. He's just more like, "Are you kidding me? He picks Navarro like you Navarro." Navarro! <laughs> I still can't you know, can't get over the fact that the name the the main planet in the Mandalorian Navarro. Like, how did Robert <laughs> felt feel about that? That's what made, that's still even more hilarious now. Like. Jesus Christ. I think I remember um coming across uh I think uh, when our when uh John S- when Campia on his channel talking about Mandalorian and then they think he had Robert Barbernet of course as a guest and of course someone in the chat had talked had dropped this little thing on the var- on, on Burnett is like how do you feel the plant now named Navarro after your nemesis? <laughs> I think it might have been me who did really? that. It might have been after Robert left the show for time reasons, so he didn't get to see that question. 
Yeah. And Kevin it just come, went completely over his head. He was like, yeah, sure. I mean, there's a planet on the bottom. I don't see what the problem is. No, but uh, <laughs> going back to Leo's little comment there, that match, that was a great match to watch because they got comic book movies in round two. They annihilated that slice. They swept it cleanly, which why I kept thinking to myself, if Schnepp had played in IG around the same time Navarro was playing, he would have been fantastic too. But even then, before they got into round two, um, it was like a very taken apart. It was like a very cut uh, like a uh, um, lead because Blofeld Cat they got fourteen points, only missing two in round one, and Heroes only got nine points, missing uh, five questions. No, 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 hold on. Three. Is that the question? Is that the one where they had the sports question? Like uh, where the answer was <laughs> really brought up. Yeah, the three pointer. Yeah, the three pointer. Uh, it was named two actors who played. Uh, I think a, this track. Uh, it was a sports biopic question on who played this. Uh, this this athlete, this track athlete, and Mark, and of course, and Draco. He knew that question immediately. I know this one. Yeah, he said Billy Crump and Jared Leto were was the answer. I just can't. Uh, but yeah, it was just the. Um, it, but it was unfortunate too because after they got in that clean sleep in combo movies, they cut that they cut down from what was a five point lead to a three point lead, and it, it it did no 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 to a one point lead. I'm sorry, a one point lead because they were behind. The Blofeld Cat only got eight points, only getting twenty two, and then of course they get twelve going from hitting from nine getting all twelve all twelve points going from nine points to twenty one by that close. Then, of course, in that round, Hector gets that Disney's question, that two-pointer, nails it, of course. That Snow White question. And then uh, they get their two – then Blofeld got that two-pointer in family films, which they miss. They miss their three-pointer in horror thriller. And then uh, they get their five-pointer in 80s movies. And then it just fell to them – to were heroes, they just needed to get either three or five. They just needed to get their five pointer to win, but that three pointer would have made things a lot more interesting, honestly. But yeah, that sports question was just give me a break. <laughs> and Mark and Draco said that it's the only sports question he's ever going to know. <laughs> yeah, that never... you know, let me ask you this. Go for it. In this in. Six between Kevin Smith and John Schnapp. Who do you see winning? Smith? I mean, as much as I do love Schnapp, Smith would have won that match. It's hard not, especially season six, Smith mm -hmm. went on a tear. He tore through. David Moore, I think, was his yeah, name. Yeah, he, he, he did. He had a technical. He did a knockout against David Moore. He TKO'd uh, Hector Navarro. No, he, he KO'd Moore. He KO'd Jay Washington. He TKO'd Hector Navarro. Uh, he also, and then, then he had three knockouts before he got to Mike Kalinowski. Then he lost. Then he got back on his KO winnings by beating, by KOing uh, Adam Lavick. I think Smets, I, I, I think Schnepp would have given Smets a good run, honestly. But like I, I mean, for Christ's sakes, he hosted Collider Heroes. We should never overlook that. Heroes was mainly all about the geek, the geek area, the geek division, not just in trivia, but the, the geek division in movies alone. So I do believe that Schnepp would have given Kevin a great fight, but Smets, yeah. I do believe he would have won that. I think I I don't think it ends in a knockout. Let's put it that way. And is it isn't it kind of funny that the only person that Smets hasn't knocked out is Chandru? Yeah, because he knocked out Kalinowski in spectacular, even though he lost him once. But he never knocked out Chandru, even when he beat him. That's true. Yeah, he got yeah he got Chandru all the way to his five pointer, and still Kevin still got to answer his question, which he won. Uh, yeah, like yeah, Brian. I do remember it's in my. I do remember he KO'd. I'm sorry. He just Smith has so many KOs in his record that it's hard to finally start to differentiate which one was a TKO and which one was a KO. <laughs> but that, but yeah, thank you, Brian, for that. Thank you. Uh, but I, but um, but yeah, with Smith and John Schnepp, I think that would have been a good match. Even the back and forth, possibly. Even though it's season six, Smith, he was not a talker. Kaiser was mainly the guy doing the talk. I think that's one of the things that hurts the most with Schnepp's passing. We were we were truly robbed 
of seeing something glorious of Schnepp in the, or the later se- the, in the Magic season in the new era. Honestly, just having Schnepp's know. presence there, either on the desk as a team player. I still, I truly believe he was done with singles, and he would have been great as an IG player. But I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Ben. Go so for it. I would have loved to see him for a moment. Maybe in that. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, okay. I know when I hear the Mount Corruption, I wanted to hear Sean Schnapp on, um, on, oh, man. And can I hear it? Oh, oh Dungeon Dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was, that was a scary combination. Oh, uh, Schnapp and Kai here. Damn. Yeah, because yeah, like, guys, the, in the factions, I mean, the Mercs were my first choice. Dungeon definitely would have been a second choice, and honestly, my third choice would have been him, and in the Usual Suspects, Ooh, like that, that's that a wild card. As much as I love the other managers, I love Roxy. I lo- I'm loving Kate, uh, and I love Winston. I don't think they would have been able to gel with Smith. I mean. Schmodown wise, in the Schmodown, I don't think their personalities would have worked with Schnipp. But that's just I, what I, that I, 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 I see Winston working with him. I don't see Roxy or Kate as much as I love them. I don't see them working with Schnipp. I mean, I, I know Roxy see... would have been a great supporter, like a great coach to Schnipp, but it's just kind of like who could get the best out of him. I mean, going, off I mean, of point, going off of Ryan's point, I'm having a hard time picturing Shannon working with Schnepp. Yeah. Definitely Mike, but not necessarily Shannon. Yeah. And yes, I will say this all day. Schnepp as a heel. We would have seen a I would have loved to have seen Schnepp because season four, because Schnepp during his time, he was kind of like Mike during his time during his early year in the Shmo now. Really the happy smile. Well, not smiling, but you know, like face style, there to play, there to have fun. I would have loved to have truly seen Schnepp do the route that Mike did, go heel and really tear, really tear into the Shmo now, seeing exactly what path he would have cut himself out there of new. But even then, I have a going about through, that. Go for I it. I have a thing about that. Uh, something that I've been thinking about for the last couple of years. Because Schnepp didn't get a chance to go heel like he wanted to, I think that's the main reason why they brought Burnett back. And remember, when they brought him back, the first thing he did was burn down Finstock's mask. Yeah. You remember the big rivalry that Schnepp had with Finstock at the beginning? Yeah. He carried over to Burnett being in a, in a rivalry with Finstock because he dropped him from the Lions then, the original Lions then. Yeah. I think Burnett did what Schnepp wanted to do. He carried on his legacy because he couldn't. And it kind of – it no. sucks. That no, that makes – that I do like that theory because I did think one of the reasons it, th- that was also at the time after season five, uh, Gucci did make a face turn after Spectacular Three, turning over a new leaf with Who's the Boss. So it did make so much sense. Like if Chef was definitely still with us, that would have made so much sense if he was still around because then we would have seen a heel Chef, maybe him teaming up, maybe as a player or. Like, oh my god, it would have been amazing seeing him and Guy for, and Drew McWeeny as this little faction. Actually, no, him and Burnett together, because let's just say he joins Burnett on the dark side, you know, as heels. Burnett decides to be a manager, and then let's say this. Oh my god, now I'm starting to think about this here. The because when step because when Burnett came in, who did he get paired off with? He immediately gets paired off with Andrew Guy. Then they get Drew McWeeny, they form the family. And of course, later on they get Brandon Hanna, but at that time. Let's say season six, if Schnepp was still with us, we see Burnett burn the mask, but then who's right behind him or who's next to him? John Schnepp. Those two come with the, the, with the hoodie going, good. Palpatine. <laughs> 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 and then we can have this crazy thing. Maybe we get heroes back as heels, or Burnett still decides to be a manager, and John Schnepp decides. You know what? I've had my fun in teams. I'm going to take a different route. He decides to be an IG player. So then it doesn't change up the formula of him getting Guy and McWinnie. And that would have been a – I would have loved to – oh, God. John Shep as part of the family. That would have been one scary faction. <laughs> yeah. God, just really thinking about this stuff makes it hurt even more that he's gone. But even then, Schnepp's time in the Schmodown 
was still fantastic. I still enjoy watching his matches, even if he didn't know the answers. That's why I love. That's why his singles matches against Kale and then against a, a Finstock are so fun because it's just him, him just have just him just joking around like, oh, I didn't know it. Okay, I'm moving the fuck on. <laughs> Even when in his team's match with uh, Worlds of Steel, gets asked a uh, round one question, didn't know it, he just drew Batman on the board. It was like, look, Batman! Yeah. Like, it's fucking fun. And that, that's that's what I love most about the time we had with him. He always took every opportunity to have fun and put smiles on people's faces. Yeah. In Oh no! I, I mean, I agree with you guys. You know, he made me laugh. One of my favorite memories, crowded in my head, um, more not related, but it was on Collider Movie Talk when they were talking about that Christmas and a Kendrick movie. No way! No <laughs> like, I mean, nothing so hard in that. What would happen? What would happen? What would have happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, his little his rant on Transformers: Age of Extinction. That clip is still there on YouTube. I mean, if you guys just go onto YouTube, just hit John Shep in your search engine, you will find it there. I can't do that clip justice because John Shep's passion. And his little art, his, just his anger over Transformers is is a sight to behold. It's one of the reasons why. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was gonna say it's one of those reasons why he was so fun to watch, especially on uh, Heroes. Uh, <laughs> yes, Brock, live oh, event. Yeah, definitely. That's one. Of, uh, and then uh, the shit. Yes, the shit rats. The shit rats. <laughs> Oh, and, um, oh, God, what are we doing? Tony Ravioli! Tony Ravioli and King Yeah, Tony Ravioli and his friend, uh, Beauty Peppers. And, um, shit, where was I going with that? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I had something there, and then I lost it, because I because I was really trying to find a good little uh, quip that he did in his uh, Age of Extinction rant, but it's, like, it's escaping me. Oh, yeah. Like, that, I, his rant about Batman and Robin, when they did the spotlight for Heroes, I mean, he just talked for 15 minutes about how bad that movie is, and he threw it to Burnett, and he was like, what do you think about it? And Burnett was just laughing. He couldn't talk about it. Oh. Compared <laughs> Be, uh, Batman, Batman and Robin to a lobotomy. That's right. She, that was actually, that ran too, actually, at the time, because uh, before, when I was still coming into Collider movie, when I was still in the AFC movie news and when it went to Collider, I was still one of the few people that staunchly defended Batman and Robin as an entertaining movie. But when Schnepp had laid down that rant, I'm like, he made me question my movie taste for Wait. five hours afterwards. Wait. Like, I was going over my mind. I'm like, Batman Roman's good, right? And then he just talking about oh. how it's like a body. I'm like, holy shit. Like he like for like for a while now, I was actually on the camp of hating Batman and Robin. But now I'm back on like enjoying it again by acknowledging flaws. <laughs> Oops, you were gonna say something, Ben, go for it. Um I'm not being mad about intention. I'm not how did it go? He wasn't I'm not he said yeah, look, he said, uh, you know what's really crazy is that he's making three of them. They haven't even made the first one, and they're already thinking of a fucking trilogy. Like, Tetris is a bunch of shapes, and oh, we've got aliens invading the, the world. we got to take a bunch of teenagers to build a Tetris world, or, world around the Earth, and there's your movie. Yeah, something like that. I'm, I can't do him justice. It's He was the schnick. Yeah, I know. That's why it's definitely it's so hard. That's why I can't really think of a good uh way to to bring justice to his, to his rants, to his passion. I it's really difficult. It's really difficult. But even then, just like uh, another uh, one of our favorite moments. I mean, everyone, if you guys are watching this on replay, just go onto your YouTube, YouTube and just search John Snap. Look, even if you find the clips of him either uh, from his stuff on uh, Heroes, Collider News, or from Movie Fights, still look at the episodes he was in for Movie Fights. Watch his old Schmodown matches. Like, really, 
just sit back, turn your brain off, and just enjoy the matches, even if and enjoy the debates as well. I mean, it's it's just it's really entertaining. Um, but oh. look, as we're oh, go for it, Ben. Yeah, I was gonna say something else, but go for it. I can wait. I really, I really want to do him before we wrap up here. Remember when he and oh, who 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 was that actor who came on Movie Talk? Um, a New York actor. Yeah, thank you. Remember oh, when him, him and Michael Rappaport and kind of got into a fight over comic book movies? Yeah, I literally thought that debate was going to turn into a shouting match between those guys because, it, like, Shep wasn't trying to change. Shep was standing his damn ground against Rappaport. That was just, yeah. I was legit worried. Like, they were going to have to cut to, they were going to have to cut the black or do put the whole technical difficulty sign on screen because these men were just getting so, like, more, like, mm -hmm. they were, like, you can see in their faces, mm -hmm. they were getting more stubborn and more angrier. Like, they weren't, the, the voices didn't change a lot. I mean, of course, they got louder, but it was just more of like you were waiting for like a bomb to go off between these two. <laughs> yeah. Ben, I put something in the share screen. Could you put it up? Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Let's yeah. see what <laughs> this This might be my favorite, my favorite John Schnepp moment of all time. Every time. Right. Good, I'm on the show. Let's, let's challenge this stupid Google computer. Translate this, mofo. Scribble, scramble, begibble. Egg, scramble, flip, flop, and bing, bong. Scribble, gabba, 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 Fruit joint. <laughs> that actually is that way. <laughs> I, I I think I, I said this before the show started. I was I was at work. We, the work day just ended. I was just waiting for the shift to be over so I can go to the, to the bus back home. I was watching this on my laptop. I was drinking some a bottle of Coca Cola. He said that, and pff, all the Coca Cola was all over my laptop, all over the table. It was just, and I was a mad, laughing puddle of just laughter. It was. It, like I said, my favorite all-time Schnepp moment. And Ben, since I have you here, uh, we gotta do a top five Schnepp moments on Get Sweaty at some point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before you guys get right, I'll get right down. I'll get down. Yeah, uh, before we wind down, I also brought up something uh, just to remind everybody of a great Schnepp moment. Yeah. Uh, ben, if you're able to. Yeah. Yes. It's the moment that Fifty Shades had quoted perfectly, and I'm going to share it with all of you. Uh, make sure you can hear the sound first. Can you hear, I, no, I, I, I can hear the sound. sound? You've got to be kidding me. And it's just right before he's about to list them off. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. I'm going to do this again. <laughs> See, there it Remember is. I'm trying to bring up the best hmm? Remember the click share audio in the little box there. Yeah, that's a new feature on StreamYard, unfortunately, that before then it was no problem sharing this stuff. But now it's like, now you got to bring it on. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now I bring to you, ladies and gentlemen, as we are winding down, the clip of John Schnepp that will not live in infamy, but live in our memories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. All seven. Yes, please. Sleepy, uh, drowsy. <laughs> Wait, hang on a second. All right, I, I got sleepy, sneezy, um, scowly, skimpy, scrambles, fuck you, and Easter eggs. I, I don't know. <laughs> there it is, you guys. You got it. <laughs> okay, uh, that truly a great moment. That's one of the great highlight moments of Shmoney that John Schnepp was able to give to us. But yes, as we wind down this episode, guys, uh, I really appreciate it. I'm sorry, you got something else? I said a great moment from a great man. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I couldn't say it better myself. Uh, we're running down 50. I'm glad that we were able to have you on with us. I'm glad you agreed to come on to talk about John Schnepp. Even uh, other than that... Is there anything you want us to check you out on? Like anything you want to promote or just like anything you want all of us on the replay, anybody on the replays or anyone live right now to follow you on? Oh, just uh, check out my, my YouTube channel, 50 Shades of Geek. You can also check out my, me on Twitch, 50 Shades oh. of Geek without the F because apparently 50 Shades of Geek was already taken. And I do a mostly weekly series where, I'm, where I try, 
Emphasis on try to beat Pokemon Shield using only a Shedinja. If you're a Pokemon fan, you know exactly why that is impossible and frustrating, and all of that will be cut up into little tiny bits on my gaming channel, Fifty Shades of Gaming. You can also check out my Patreon, Pokemon Star, Cross, and Crescent, where I'm designing a Pokemon game, a fan game, based on Israel, the country where I live in. And I just got some new artwork. I'm going to drop them after the show. And I've only got some new ones uh, today, as a matter of fact, which I'll be releasing uh, next week sometime. So, uh, ben, And Ben is a patron. He knows exactly how cool uh, yeah. all the stuff is uh, wow. that I'm working on. That's a, that is amazing. I mean, it's been a while since I've played Pokemon in a while. I mean, last one I played was the remastered uh, yellow and uh, red and blue with green, emerald green. I did uh, at least got go. the first. Huh? It was Let's Go, right? Or are you talking about the fire red and leaf green? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, fire red and leaf green. They did release a yellow, though, unless I was wrong, because... Yellow the came out after red and blue, and it was sort of based on the enemy. Which is yeah, why you I can find the in the Radiant Forest, but you couldn't find them earlier. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, it's been a while since I played Pokemon. But other than that, thank you for coming on with us. Uh, ben, where can people find you? Uh, go right ahead. I mean, they, they, they clearly see the overlays here, but anything else you want to go for it. You follow at ben too. You can find me on my other YouTube channel at 50 Shades of Geek Hill. Uh, we know Swedish Network. We will do a bunch of stuff. It's a fun time. Um, yeah, just follow, follow me there. How about you, Ryan? Nope. Well, of course, everyone in the overlay can see. You can just follow me on my Twitter account, uh, Caramel underscore Pain. Also, check me out every now and then here on Mount Schmodown with my co-host Ben. And whenever Brandon, you know, he when we get him back, we're, we're, we're going to bring him back as well. And then also check me out. I uh, have a if you anybody here is interested in wrestling, I do co-host a, a wrestling podcast called Wrestling Rambles and Rages. It's on Anchor, uh, Podbean, wherever you get your uh, pod, wherever you get your podcast or where you listen your podcast on. We have it there. Other than that, I'll be here every Saturday on Mount Schmodown. Pop, and our next couple of episodes are going to be, I'm gonna say they're gonna be a doozy for us to get through. But other than that. Thank you, everybody, for coming on. Have yourself a great morning, afternoon, and evening. I butchered a Jim Carrey line, but it doesn't matter. But we're here to have fun. And once again, everybody, have a great day. Have a good one.